today's very special card that I'm going to be playing with that I won with a cheeky bid on eBay because there wasn't much interest in it is a Miro Video 20TD VL I believe it's called a live uh, it's got a TV tuner obviously that's analog and fairly useless these days ET4000 W32 VGA uh, chip and the ET4000 V33 Viper chip which is a video interface processor or something along those lines it's responsible for the full screen scaling hardware scaling of the um, TV signal as well as video input signals because this does video capture as well I believe um, I've had a hard time finding software for it but I think I finally found it I have archived the BIOS um, and I have submitted it to RetroWeb whether they actually put it on there's another question I'm not getting any attention so far and obviously I've taken photos of this card as well because there doesn't seem to be a lot of info on this card out there and yes, it is VLB. Uh, so, I mean, just for the uh, ET4000W32 itself, with two megs of video memory, it makes it quite a desirable VLB card in itself. But I'm keen to actually see if I can get these additional functions working on here. If I can't, so be it. It's still a very good video card. That's what the other side looks like if you're interested and yes it is a German company and I had to search through generic German uh, driver archives to actually find something for this hopefully I have found it because there doesn't seem to be any rips of the original software um, this does actually work well they told me it worked, and there was photos of it working in the listing, so hopefully it's okay. First thing I'll say is, holy crap, that is a long video card. But it's working. To actually get it to fit in, I had to remove this coax connector for the RF input because there was just no way that that was going to slide into this particular frame and it can only go into this VLB slot because it would hit the CPU if it went into that one. Because yeah, this thing is a freaking monster. Let's see if I can get it working. Well, working with Windows anyway. So interestingly, Windows didn't even detect that the video card had changed from what was in here. It was just a scummy Trident card. Um, and this ET4000 is actually working perfectly fine with the same driver. With all uh, colors available. Um, I will go ahead and get the drivers saved onto this machine and then go ahead and install them. I believe it also has the tuner and capture software as well. We'll see if I can get that working. So much to my astonishment, this card actually works perfectly. The uh, composite video input is a real hidden treasure. Um, as I mentioned, it has hardware uh, scaling on that ET4000V33 chip. So this isn't using the uh, actual CPU of the computer at all to display that in silky smooth 30 frames per second. Um, that is my only composite video source that I could find quickly, it's just my old N64. Um, these drivers installed seamlessly, there is no install.exe. Um, you just uh, <coughs> use the uh, driver in here for the video card and then in that process it actually installs a whole bunch of other crap into Windows. And then when you restart the computer, it runs an installer. God knows where it comes from, but, but yeah, and it installs everything. You don't actually need to put it on a floppy disk. You can just reference, if you remember, where you have saved it on the hard drive, just point it to it 
and it works. The only thing I had to do manually, I had to, from that work folder, which is in the archive file folder, uh, file, I had to copy um, mdi.dll into Windows, and uh, away it went. I can't actually find out how to get the TV tuner to work because this uh, Miro TV software seems to be kind of crap. It does only give me the choice of the uh, composite, uh, the SVHS input, and also something called intern. Maybe intern is for the tuner. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't get the tuner to work. Not that there's actually any analog broadcasts anymore anyway, so that's kind of pointless, but it would be interested to see it working. Now, as for the hidden gem on this composite input, when you uh, full screen it, it adds scan lines. Now, I don't know if that's a hardware limitation or what, but that's bloody awesome. I love it. And um, I'm going to play around with this a bit more and see what else I can do with it. But god damn, composite video on a modern LCD monitor looking this good is freaking great. So I will actually upload these drivers to the retro web just to make sure if anyone comes across one of these cards in future they don't have to search for days on end to find this software like I had to. Turns out uh, no one has done this but it did exist on three German driver archive sets that I found on archive.org. You can't download them directly anymore but you can um, torrent them so I've got those anyway and yeah I will back these up and upload them so very nice card very very happy with that um, hopefully I can work out how to get the uh, analog tuner working but no guarantees on that now this is no powerhouse machine while it does have a pod P in it um, it's not exactly a rocket ship, but uh, this card makes Doom 95 actually playable on this machine. And yeah, I do have a sound card, I just don't have speakers rigged up at the moment. But yeah, I'm really happy with this purchase. I'm glad I sniped those people that were desperately after this card, but uh, their loss is my gain. And the seller did not advertise it correctly, didn't even uh, describe exactly what it was, but uh, yeah, I'm stoked.